So I uh, would like to thank everybody for coming to this bonus uh, session after our third episode of Unremarkable Labs. For those of you who have already watched it, at the end of that session, uh, I was a bit uh, dazed and confused about exactly what had happened. Uh, to give you a quick summary, um, you can see the fishbone at the top of the screen. We had a patient who came in with hyponatremia, uh, fatigue, nausea, and vomiting. Uh, and the not involving been going on for a while. What we knew about the patient was that she had lupus and had a recent bout of lupus, lupus pleuritis that lasted uh, about three months ago. And she'd been on a very high dose of prednisone since, and we were told that she was still tapered down to 40 milligrams. When everything was worked up, uh, it was clear that she had increased ADH uh, she was treated as if she had increased ADH, but there was this persistent hyponatremia. And as part of the protocol for working up hyponatremia, the residents appropriately checked a random cortisol. The random cortisol was very low, so therefore they appropriately did an ACTH stimulation test and did not get a very good response. And in addition to that, they got an ACTH level, which was low. This is very consistent with secondary adrenal insufficiency uh, that you get when you have someone on steroids and taper the steroids. But what I didn't understand and was driving me crazy was if she's on 40 milligrams of prednisone, she should have a high cortisol level. Uh, I have this affliction that when things don't make sense, I obsess over them. And so late, later that night, I started reading up on this. I remembered that a colleague of mine, when I was the dean in Huntsville, uh, she was the uh, chief of uh, the internal medicine division up there, had been a rheumatologist and had rheumatology training. And she would always remind us that prednisone is a prodrug. Prednisone is not active. It has to be converted to prednisolone. And some people don't either don't have that enzyme or for some reason they don't uh, metabolize well. So I did some reading about that and I found a very interesting, although anecdotal article about people who don't respond to prednisone but do respond to prednisolone. And I wondered if could this be the problem here that they're just using the wrong steroid. So what we want to do in this session is first discuss why you get secondary adrenal insufficiency, uh, discuss uh, how maybe uh, this would explain all of her numbers. And then we have a surprise ending, just like a good uh, uh, mystery story. Sean, why don't you do some teaching? So one of the things we wanted to really talk about is how does hypocortisolism lead to increased ADH? And there's a couple different methods uh, for this. So when you have low cortisol, you have increased cortisol releasing hormone, which also stimulates ADH. You can kind of see that all roads almost lead to increased ADH. Uh, the reduction in blood pressure and reduced cardiac output, we don't understand it fully how this leads to increased ADH secretion. However, it does. Um, so there's multiple ways that hypocortisolism leads to hyponatremia. So the patient in this case, um, because she had long been on uh, a dose of steroids, she uh, essentially did not work it uh, for her adrenal gland, which led to her adrenal gland essentially going to sleep and not producing its own endogenous cortisol. So Dr. Centaur alluded to prednisone being a prodrug. So it's converted in the liver by 11-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase to prednisolone. Um, and so we had wondered if, because it's a prodrug, perhaps this patient may have had a deficiency in this enzyme, which would cause her to have a lower prednisolone level, which would then lead to a lower cortisol level. And then we uh, talked among ourselves, and we didn't know if uh, cortisol, the assay, if it measures just cortisol or if there's a cross reactivity between prednisolone and other steroids. So it turns out that prednisolone has a 41% cross reactivity 
with the cortisol assay. So if she was appropriately converting prednisone to prednisolone, about 41% of that prednisolone should be measured in the cortisol assay. And so I think Stephen at this point will give us the surprise ending. So I love um, that Dr. Centaur, this bothered him so much um, because that's what stimulated a really good discussion um, that, that he and Sean just discussed. Um, it made me, it provoked me to look back at the case and make sure that I had the details right. And on second review, I realized that she was not on 40 milligrams when she presented to us. She actually started on 40 milligrams a couple months prior and had slowly weaned down. And when she presented to us was actually only five, on five milligrams of prednisone, which could potentially explain why her cortisol levels were so low despite taking um, a steroid because she, at that uh, dose, it's essentially about physiologic. And so that's really the case resolution is that she was not on enough prednisone. Um, and so we, I'm glad that we were thinking about this and it stimulated this discussion. Um, Dr. Centaur, anything that you'd like to add? Yeah, so I, I, I did some reading subsequent to this and um, in order to get suppression of the pituitary and suppression of the adrenal gland, which she had, they say it takes two to three months. So the history makes sense for secondary adrenal insufficiency because she'd been started on a high dose three months ago and it probably had been a very slow taper as is often done in patients with lupus. Um, it reminds us that anytime someone comes in with hyponatremia, we have to think about the possibility of adrenal insufficiency. It's one of those never missed diagnoses uh, that we need to think about. Um, and I hope that this little bonus reminds you that when things don't make sense, uh, be obnoxious and continue asking questions about it. Go back over it. Um, I, I obsess and replay it over and over in my mind and discuss it with people. And I think that's a very healthy trait in medicine. Um, for those of you who are old enough to remember the uh, mystery, seri mystery series Columbo, Peter Falk who played Columbo would uh, be finishing an interview, he'd scratch his head and he'd turn to the suspect and say, you know, there's something bothering me. And I think that that's a great tra trait for us to have uh, when we're trying to understand how lab tests fit. Uh, thanks, Stephen, for g going back uh, and uh, clarifying exactly uh, what uh, steroids the patient was on, because now it all makes sense. And Sean just did a brilliant job of explaining why uh, adrenal insufficiency causes hyponatremia. We hope you've learned a lot from this and from the great work of our chief residents.